What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can save stats for your character. I was going to make this video about attacking for the second video which kind of goes with like walking so you could walk and attack but unfortunately there's certain stats that are going to get saved like the shot speed and the attack speed that are really important for the attack and it doesn't make sense to set it up and then go back and change it after the fact. So I'm just going to be setting up the stats first and then I'll set up the attack in the next video. Uh, so before we get started I would encourage you to like the video and subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah. So inside your project at the bottom here where it says assets if you right click you can create another folder and we're going to call this scripts and then inside of the scripts folder we're going to right click and create another folder and we're going to call a player and then we're going to go back to our uh, models or models player folder we're going to drag the player movement folder into the scripts folder and then from there we'll drag it into the player folder and then inside of this player folder we're going to right click at the bottom we're going to create a c sharp script and just call this player after you've created the player uh, script what you need to do is double click on it this is not going to be a mono behavior so mono behavior is what makes it into a game object it's what makes it so like it's used as a game object but we don't want to do that we just want to use this as like a settings class so we're going to get rid of the start and the update method and we're just going to put the word static in front of the word class and basically what this does is it means we can access this class from anywhere inside of the project just by using the name so instead of insta like instantiating the class and then using the instantiation of the class, you can actually use this directly. So like, let's say we have public static integer called uh, number value, and it's a zero, right? Well, if you're inside of if you're inside of your uh, movement class or somewhere else, right? You can type in player dot number value and use this from anywhere inside of your project this is very very useful so like obviously you have to use it in a certain way so like if you wanted to declare float h again you could set it as the number value or you could use it like that but you don't usually to use a class like if we made it well without it being static we could say player p is a new player and then we could call p dot number value right but because it's static, we don't use it like that. There's only one copy of it. It's like a singleton, right? Where there's only one copy of the class and we're able to use it from anywhere inside of the project. So this is really valuable for things like his speed, for example. So instead of having uh, this number value, let's get rid of that and we'll type in float speed. Oh, I got my caps lock on, right? And his uh, speed, I think was 0.5F. So here, instead of having this number, what we can do is down uh here where we've multiplied this to get the speed we can type in player dot speed right so we can use this player class all throughout our project for all sorts of crazy things right so like his attack speed his attack damage his attack prefab and stuff like that so what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to be making his attack but i just want to show you how this is going to work so like let's say we have a game object here sorry public game object uh, attack Sorry, it's gonna be static, that's why. So now, if we have this attack saved here, we could use this in the attack class, right? So it determines like what his attack is. Like in the Binding of Isaac, there's so many items that you can pick up that change his attack. Like uh, maybe you pick up Brimstone or um, Mega Tears or Shielded Tears or something, right? And it changes the prefab that we're using when he actually does the attack. So you can save what his attack is inside of this class. Now you can't drag and drop different objects into a static class the way that you did before. What we need is an instantiation class or initialization class. So at the bottom here where we created the player and the player movement, we're gonna create another script. And this one's gonna be called initialize player. So after we create this, we're gonna uh, go to our player right because this is a, a script that's actually going to get attached to the player this static class doesn't get attached to anything it's just an, a class that we're using as a storage for all of our variables right so inside of this initialized player class what we can do is if we get rid of the update method because we don't need that we can use this to fill the variables right so for example in our player class maybe we want to save the camera there right so we could say public static camera uh, player cam or something, right? You could name it whatever you want to. What you could do is inside of this initialized player class, we can create a public camera and just call it cam or whatever, right? And then in the start method, we can say that player dot cam player cam is equal to cam, 
right? So we're we, at the very beginning of the game, we're going to initialize the player by putting these variables into the static class so we're able to use them throughout the game. Then in our player movement, if we wanted to move the camera like we do here, instead of saying cam.transform.position, we could say player.playerCam.transform.position, and then we don't have to get this variable here. Right. So this is useful because let's say we have 10 scripts that access the camera. Well, we don't want to drag the camera into all 10 scripts. It's a waste of time. Right. So you could have it dragged into this script, which will populate the static class script for this. Right. And then you can use this in all of your scripts. So you only have to get one copy of it. It's better for performance and it's a lot easier. It makes your code more manageable to do it this way. So this is um, how we're going to be using like the player attack is this is where we're going to save what his attack is uh, and we're going to be declaring it in here. We're not doing that this video. That's going to be the next video. OK, and if you set it up like this, you actually need to change the script execution order. So if you go to edit in the settings and you just click project settings, there's an option on the left for script execution order this will uh, determine what gets built first in your project so we just need to add initialized player as the very very first thing all right we're just going to put this to negative one it needs to be before see this line here this is default time this is where all the other scripts are going to load and the initialized player has to happen first so the player static class is not it doesn't get initialized it doesn't work like that right it's uh static means it's always available it's always running it's always a memory right but um anyway so the initialized player is what puts the variables into the static class and this has to happen before the other scripts happen because in the other scripts we might be using variables from a static class especially things like generating the map and stuff like that right and if you don't have this loading first, then it could load after the other scripts and then you'll get an error or whatever at the bottom. So let's close out of this and click apply. And this says cam doesn't exist in current context. Oh, right. We got to do player cam. And uh, we're just going to change this from player cam to camera. And we're going to go into the player class and just rename this to camera. Right. So inside of the player, like if you click on your actual player on the right, you just have to drag your camera into the camera slot and then uh, you can use this uh, camera. All right, and as you can see, we're using the main camera from our static class now, and we're actually able to move around the game and, and use uh, the speed is set from the static class and the camera is set from the static class and all of our settings for the players. So the attack speed, the move speed, the shot speed, everything regarding the players all going to be saved in this one static class. So um, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an attack. And like I said, we're going to be putting the attack into this static class. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for uh, this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like the video and subscribe. And hopefully you'll stick around for the rest of the series. And I'll see you guys in the next video.